At main stage, the quad stream was back, and with it means more incredible sets that we would have missed streamed, and more of us trying to watch and enjoy four sets at once, all the way up to top 16. But don't worry, that's why I'm here, to tell you all about the best sets that you missed from main stage 2022. The first set I want to talk about happened outside of the top 64, with Lucky vs Far. This set was both funny and fun in general, Lucky always being a pleasure to watch with his standout Fox play, and Far, who's come a long way from being referred to in diss tracks, and is now 10th on the Mexican PR. Some would say very decently punching above his weight in this set, with it going the full distance, and Far showing very solid play, but Lucky with some clutch plays, especially on Game 3, made the Game 5 a great watch. With a Zoo put it, that was up on nice if you're interested in so I'm not interested. I, I just, <laughs> it's just, I just, it's all far lucky. This is yeah, so I mean, it is compelling cursed. right now. Honestly, a joke's watch and would highly recommend. Now, getting into top 64, I want to go as I always do into my Euro bias and look at a great run from our big red boy whose feet allegedly stick out the bed. Frenzy. Frenzy went on a great run after going to a close game 5 set with Slug in which he nearly bought it back with a reverse 3-0. If you want to see some killer ICs play, check out Game 3 on Yoshi's. However, after losing that, Frenzy would go down into losers, but he would go on a great run through Premier, Top Players, SFAT and Logos, both in great 3-1 performances to get 17th at the whole event. So check out these sets if you want to see some great performances from someone theoretically punching above their weight. I always love good Falco gameplay, and especially so when watching a run from someone from the UK. I think more country diversity and worldwide competition is so sorely needed in Melee. And also more diversity in Melee content. So if you're enjoying the video, don't forget to subscribe, it really helps me out and keeps that weekly video machine flowing with great energy. Thank you very much, and on with the vid. While Slug Frenzy was going on, right next to it was nearly an upset that would have changed the whole tournament. As of IBDW having a great run to second, and a lot of people being behind him after the recent Panda Global drama. He nearly got his whole tournament shaken up with a Game 5 set against Luna Dusk, another great Ices player who we saw do great at the Ludwig Invitational. And after Luna Dusk got 4 stocked in Game 3, but came back to take Game 4, and then take the lead with this combo in Game 5, I honestly thought it was all she wrote for IBDW. However, he fought back, not losing another stock to take the set back. But it's crazy to think what would have gone down had this gone the other way. Oh, and guess what, I'm not done with this section of the tournament, as literally just as the Frenzy Slug set was ending, Ginger vs Curve took off in a great display of just how volatile Falco vs Fox is. As Ginger looked extremely dominant vs Curve in the first two games, that you wouldn't be blamed for looking away. However, as we've seen when top players go up in a set, that momentary lax in thinking that it's pretty much over can be enough for that level just below to snap at the angles and take down the top level which is exactly what happened here. Curve struck back with a clean FD game and a close game four, which at some point Ginger lost control of. And again, this loss of control only seemed to spiral out, causing a game five counter pick to Yoshi's, which seems very counter to what I thought Ginger normally likes to pick in this matchup. And it went about as well as that might insinuate. This is a great slobber knocker of a set, game four being a really intense highlight, and I'm sure in this 20 minutes of time from the start of Frenzy Slug to the end of this set, I'm sure that you'll find something that you enjoy. There was for me a highlight in this side of the bracket though, which was the run of Dawson, a Puff player from Philadelphia currently ranked second there. While Dawson is clearly a great player, being capable of having good runs and placing consistently in the top 64 of majors, Main Stage 2022 was clearly a breakout tournament for them, with a monster run almost entirely streamed on the quad side screen. Dawson would lose to Null 3-1 in winners of pools for their top 64 qualifier, and barely scraped through to the top 64 in a game 5 set versus Panos. After this, they would go on a run though, through top 64, beating J Salt in a very scary game 5, where J Salt looked poised to take the reverse 3 0. Man, I talk about reverse 3 0s and potential ones a lot in these videos. Didn't realize they happened so often. The double Dreamland counterpick ended up proving too much for the J Sheik, moving Dawson on to face Luna Dusk, who decided to play the Puff Ditto instead of their main Ices. 
I can only assume this is because the Icy Puff matchup is miserable from what I've seen. Unfortunately for Lunadusk though, Dawson was no slouch who would lose in a ditto to a secondary Puff, and cleaned up the set 3-0. Next up on the hit list was Ginger, who unfortunately for him was just off that loss to Curve. And as we all know, Ginger is susceptible to a little bit of tilt here and there. The hell you so Dawson put on a clinic in game one. With Ginger waking up and taking the next game back, game three was another nail biter, even on Dreamland. However, Ginger misinput to side B and SD is his last stop, which I cannot imagine he was very happy about. As during game four, it was back to the clinic for Dawson, who took a clean game four win on the top 15 player. And after seeing that, I can imagine Magi sitting waiting in that top 16 qualifier must have been a bit worried. I know I would have been. I don't get nervous, but I'm starting to get a bit shaky, you know what I mean? I'm a little bit weak. And the set went the whole distance over on the main stage. So if you haven't caught that one yet, make sure you do. And give all of Dawson's run a chance. It's great to see a breakout performance, and especially from someone playing an underrepresented character like Puff at the top level of the game. Last up, I want to talk about a very funny section of the bracket, rather than a particular game. This group of games went in a very interesting direction. It started off with Stiv, a fox main from Washington. That's literally all I got for you, sorry. And Preminen, I think that's how you pronounce it, the second ranked player in Minnesota. This set would go to game five, and was a great set as well by the way. Every game except one was last stock, and was a nail bite of final game. That Preminen would go on to win would recommend for any of you Fox Ditto enjoyers. They would then go on to play against Logan in another Game 5, that this time, Logan would win, thus beginning the start of the pattern that would go all the way to the top 16. Logan would then play against Crudo. Wanna guess what game this one went to? That's right, Game 5. And it was on the main stage this time, so you might have caught it, but if not, it goes without saying, a very fun set to watch. Crudo would go on to win this Game 5 and move on to face s -Fob. Are you starting to see the pattern yet? Crudo s Fop would look like it was going to break this pattern, with Crudo going up 2-0 in the set. However, s Fop wasn't going to have it, and pulled it back to a Game 5 confidently with two two stocks, and ended it Game 5 with another one, with s Fop advancing to the top 16. If you haven't spotted the pattern yet, every game obviously went to Game 5. However, also, the player who won the last Game 5 was seemingly destined to lose the next one in some horrifying case of karma from the Clutch God. I just found this section of the bracket very funny to look at and observe, and thanks to Mainstage's quad stream, we could see how it went down in all of its glory. The quad stream really is a sick new approach to streaming the melee bracket, with it archiving sets that would be lost to time, and allowing us to watch runs from players that weren't put on stream until their last game because no stream runner would have expected them to make it that far. So thanks to BTS staff for pushing down the same path as the Ludwig Championship. I hope you guys like this type of video again, and if you were keeping on enjoying it, I'll make sure to keep covering events in this way. So subscribe for more, and if you like this video, you might enjoy the last one I did on the Ludwig Smash Invitational, or maybe a more topical video on my angry summary of the biggest betrayal in Smash history. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.